From Melrose Arts, this is Art in Action, a series of live art demonstrations by prominent local artists. Working before an audience, the artists describe their process and answer questions about their technique. They show you their approach to art in a very personal way. From the art of encaustic, reverse painting on glass, fiber art, and calligraphy, it's all here. Sponsored by Melrose Arts, a volunteer group dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose. These monthly art demos are open to the public and free of charge. Today on Art in Action, pastel artist Dave Caphammer shows us how to paint a water landscape in pastel. Dave starts with a composition sketched out in charcoal on sanded pastel paper. From there, he proceeds to a pastel and alcohol underpainting and then dry pastel on top. Dave has been painting in pastels for 10 years. He was hooked by the brilliant color, immediacy, and feel of pastels. I'm usually most interested in early morning or late afternoon light when it comes in at a low angle. You get really interesting diagonal shadows. I usually work from photos. I'm working from this photo tonight. First, I sketched it on my sketchbook because I wanted practice to get this boat right. I mean, boats are really tricky. They look deceptively simple, but they're, they're really tricky, especially when they're really foreshortened like this. It's, it's hard to get the proportions right. If you do get it right and you, you got your drawing down on your surface, then you're basically coloring in. So it, you can relax and have fun with it and not worry that you're getting the drawing wrong. Got the boat in here and I sketched in some, some boats in the background. I didn't follow the photo exactly for the stuff in the background, but I did for the important things. The other thing I'm going to say is I, when I take my photos, I'm, I'm often composing with the camera. So I knew what I was looking for when I took this picture. It's not really just a picture of, the, of a boat. What I was really interested in is an angle where I got strong light on one side of the boat and shadow on the other side. Because the, the light, the contrast between the light and shadow, I think is really cool. And that's what I was looking for. I was also looking for some, some cool reflections on the, on the water, and especially reflections of the mast. They go all the way down to the bottom here, and I think that's really neat, and I love doing that. So that's what I was looking for. I also love these buoys where they moor up the boats. It's, uh, you know, the boat's tied up to this, mo this buoy. In this case, the, the rope is dipping down into the water and coming back up, and I thought that was really cool. And the reflections, of this buoy come down here and there's even traces of it further down and I find that fascinating so that's why I placed the boat up here I had somebody ask me last night when I was sketching this out why I didn't place it so you could see the whole mast and I wasn't interested in the mast up here I was interested in the reflection of the mast down here because there's all kinds of really cool squiggly lines that you get when the mast is reflected on the water, and that's really fun to do. And <laughs> it's, um, it's surprisingly easy to do and have it, have it come off and, and look really good. So that's why it's set up this way. Key to this whole thing is uh, underpainting. So when I'm using these kind of surfaces, I, I'm always going to do underpainting. There's a couple reasons for that. One, I can, I can block in big areas of color. And the way I do that is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply pastel pretty lightly and then wash it in with alcohol, just regular rub, rubbing alcohol. So that's going to give me a, a basis to start from. It also gets rid of the scary white paper because uh, any of you that are artists know that, that a big blank piece of paper is really intimidating. And for the water, I think I'm going to not, I'm not going to go with anything too different than the colors I'm seeing here. Sometimes, sometimes you do want to try to really vary from, from what you see. But in this case, I think I'm going to try to stick to pretty much what I see here. So, you know, I might choose things that are a little brighter a little more saturated. I'm trying to go around some of the little boats that I sketched up here. 
Now, I, I drew some of the lines on the, on the boat, and those are going to get lost in the underpainting, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to end up losing a little of this drawing too. Some of the like the the rope for the buoy is is not going to not going to survive. <laughs> That's okay cuz part of the part of doing the drawing is just kind of practice getting the hang of uh, of the the composition. I'm going a little bit more turquoise with the water than it it really is in the photo because now another thing that's really good about this underpainting thing is it makes the painting process go pretty quickly you can you can cover this you know in a few minutes so if you choose wisely sometimes you can end up leaving a lot of areas of the painting with just underpainting and not you don't even have to do that much on top if you know sometimes it depends how it works out but uh, sometimes that's a really uh, neat effect if you can uh, if you can pull it off there's a couple of streaks in here I want to get I'm just going to put those in now these are going to get you know pretty distorted by the the alcohol when I put it on but I'm just kind of throwing them in there to get some markers of where they're going to end up. Okay, now this is just regular rubbing alcohol. I'm using the 91%, the 91 because it's, uh, it dries faster because it's got less water in it. You can use all kinds of different stuff for underpainting. I find that most of the time I end up using the pastel with the alcohol. Uh, you do get these runs sometimes. Sometimes you like that and sometimes you don't. It depends. I think in this case I'm probably not going to want too much of, of that, of those kind of runs because it doesn't really go with, with the water. But there are times when that works really well. Like if you're doing a big grassy field, those kind of streaks add some really interesting texture and you may end up covering it up or you may end up leaving it. It kind of depends. Like I said, I don't think that's, I'm really looking for that this time. If you want to get that, you can add, you can just use a lot of alcohol and, and then it'll run and do all kinds of stuff. If you use less alcohol, you'll get less runs. There's all kinds of different brushes you can use too. I'm using a bristle brush. Uh, you can use a watercolor brush as well. So, you know, cheap brushes are, are great for this. And sometimes having a little of one color bleed into another is, is kind of nice. Sure. You know, it gives you some, it gives some color unity to the, to the painting. You don't have to stick to one color either. You can, you can blend colors with the underpainting. I, I kind of did here with the turquoise and the, and the blues. I'm trying to smooth out some of this texture up here. So yeah, I'm going to, to put other colors in on the boat and the buoy and stuff like that too, but I just wanted to start with the blues. Another important thing when you're doing the underpainting is let it dry before you do anything on top of it. Because um, if you don't, it kind of it kind of gunks up your pastels and it moves the underpainting off, and sometimes it can disturb the surface. This boat has a has a green deck on here, and it occurred to me when I was driving to work this morning that it would look cool if I did a red underpainting under that green and then when I put the green on let some of the red show through so that's what I'm doing 
I'm not really seeing a lot of red poking through on, on the photo, but I think that would look cool, so I want to try it. I'm going to put a little of that red in the mast as well. I think a bright orange on the other side. It's really important to have good darks. A lot of times when you get, you know, beginning pastel sets, there's no good darks, and darks are indispensable. I generally don't use black, even on the darkest spots, because I'm, I'm trying to push them either warmer or cooler than, than black. So I, I'm, I usually use either a, a purple or a, or a dark blue-green or dark blue or something like that, so there's a little more lively, because black is kind of dead. I'm going to put some orange on the light side. I think I'll put red on the, on the dark side, the shadow side. And again, this is just the underpainting, so I'm, I'm gonna put stuff over the top of it. Now the shadowy part of the boat, I think I'm gonna use a purple, a lavender, not too dark. It'd be really fun to have bright colors in your underpainting, because you have the option of, of completely covering them up or, or letting them show through or anything in between. I'm not going to do much on this boat back here. I think I'm going to grab a smaller brush so I have a little bit more control. The other thing you want to do with the underpainting generally is start with the, the lighter colors and work toward the dark. And it's not a, you don't have to be obsessive about sticking to that, but it usually helps keep the brush from getting too muddy. I forgot to put something in the water here, so. I'm generally trying to get rid of any of the white. I don't really want to look at the white when I'm done with the underpainting. If you got some really bright spots, it's okay to leave them white if you want to, though. But thing is you don't you don't need to you don't need to leave them because if you have a fairly dark underpainting you can actually you know if you have a nice soft pastel you can you can hit it hard over the top and and really cover that dark color and and not worry about the, the light color getting all muddy. If you didn't have an underpainting, you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't, you'd have trouble getting it back, but... The way the underpainting works, you know, once it's dry, it's there in the paper, and you can, you can work over the top of it pretty easily. Light over dark works pretty easily. Okay. I'm going to start up at the top. I'm, I'm going to sketch in a couple of the boats and then work the water around them. Now, another thing that I think is important when you're, when you're doing underpaintings and the whole painting in general is to try to um, not use all the colors. Because I have a big box of, of pastels here, but if you limit the, the color choices you have, I mean, you, you should use what you need and want to use, but try not to just use everything because for, for the painting to have some color harmony, you don't want to have, you know, like a little bit of color in a spot here and nowhere else. You, you kind of have to have a little bit of everything all over the place and not too many color choices. That way the different parts of the painting can, can relate to each other. I'm often thinking warm and cool when I'm looking at the different parts of these boats, like the, the shadowy parts need to be cool and the, the parts in the sun are warm. This looks like a really light color. It's a, it's a pale yellow, it's not white. Okay, I don't want to get too carried away with the, um, with the boats in the back here.
I'm just kind of suggesting some boats in here without uh, getting too much detail on them. Um, I'm going to go over this a little bit. Actually, I've got a, I've got a buoy right here that I wanted to get. It, it's in the photo, and just because something's in the photo doesn't mean it, it, has to, it has to show up in the painting, but I liked this buoy here, so I do want to get it. I wanted something in this spot. So I'm not covering everything, and the, the lines that I'm putting in here are going to suggest the ripples in the water that already exist in there. So it doesn't need to be too precise, especially back here. This is kind of background that needs to be loose. I, it, I don't need to get the background finished, but I want to get something in there before I go too far with the boat. I noticed that there's a little bit of reflection of, of these boats here in the water. Now if I overdo it with the, with the reflections like that, I can, I can go back with some of the, the watercolor and you know, wipe them out a little bit. So you can, you can go back and forth. So now I think it's time to hit the boat. I'm gonna start with a light, warm color on this side of the mast. And I'm gonna try and let a little bit of that orange show through. I'm gonna use my dark purple on the shadow side. I'm just gonna kind of work down on the boat here. I'm using some kind of purpley blues for the shroud around the sail. I actually kind of like how that looks. I put some of the, the, the darker color in here and then I left the underpainting and I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, this, this kind of stuff happens as you're working. You might find something that surprises you that I didn't expect that I would leave that, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to. <laughs> try to find a green and look good over that red. This might need a little bit of uh, modulating to get right because I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. <laughs> it's fun to play with the color so especially if you have if you have some nice vibrant area that you're interested in you can you can definitely play with it and not feel like you're stuck with what's in the picture and the the more experiments you do and you find out which ones work well and which ones don't and you can repeat the ones that work well and and just not do the ones that don't. Um, but it's definitely fun to, to push it a little bit. So I ended up covering up a lot of that red, but not all of it. There's a little bit of light in the inside of the boat. Ooh, that's, that's too much. <laughs> that happens. Um, that was much lighter than I wanted it. So I can brush it out with a dry brush. And What's interesting is I was brushing it out so that I could put something else in there, but it's kind of exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I like it when that happens. Definitely run into a lot of happy accidents like that, and uh, it's great when it happens doesn't always work out. So that's one of the things I really like about pastels is they're pretty forgiving. Um, you, you can get away with doing stuff like that. And a lot of mediums, like I know watercolor is not nearly as forgiving from what I hear. I don't do watercolors, but that's, I think, one of the reasons why I don't, because I need to be able to correct my mistakes, and I kind of feel like you have less freedom to do that with watercolors. I'm trying to reinforce the hard line on the top of this little spot on the um, on the boat where that comes around and uh, kind of tricky. So where I blobbed into the black or the, the dark purple there, um, I just, I was going to leave it alone with just underpainting, but I needed to reinforce it. So I hit a little bit of that dark purple again and, and kind of reinforced it and it's fine. Um, so I'm not too worried about a whole lot of detail in there, so um, you know it's okay if 
if I don't define everything. I'm not necessarily looking to define everything. I'm gonna get the color on the back of the boat. I think I'm gonna use a, a blue similar to what I've got up here. I might mix a couple colors in here because I see that it it gets darker as it goes down. I'm not I'm also not making this color that I'm putting on here very solid. It doesn't need to be that solid. I can let some of the purple show through. It's shadow. Now I got everything except the highlighted part of the boat. Uh, so I'm going to put that in now. And then there's going to be a, um, these shadows under the, the planks of the boat here I really want to get to. That, that's kind of important to me, but I need to get this. It's really bright, and I don't want it to look like all one color. I'm going to use, actually this is pretty much a pure white. But I, I had a yellowy white, and I'm putting in a pure white there, because I thought that was important. I really want to highlight it. Another thing that's important is there's a little blue shadow underneath this rim on the boat. Those shadows are important. And I love it when the shadows are a vibrant color and not just like a dull, dark color. So that's why I put in that vivid blue there. When you get up close and look at it, the shadows will kind of shimmer and I, I really like that. It's neat when your shadows have some color in them. That's one thing that you're, if you really stick with the photos, you're not gonna see that. Photos tend to show pretty dull colors in the shadows, but a lot of times the shadows are a lot more interesting than the, than the photos will tell you. I've got like a, a dark burgundy here that I'm putting in the, the darkest spots just to kind of reinforce them a little bit. It adds a little bit of color. This dark burgundy is, is pretty cool. It's very rich. I'm going to throw a little bit of it in here. Even back here on, on this boat, there's, there's some of that as well. So I'm, I want that to be less detailed, but I do want to see it. So I'm just trying to figure out what color I want for the bright part of this boat. I don't want it to be too bright. So there I've got, I got the boat the way I want it. I guess I'll go with the buoy next. So on this buoy, I'm seeing kind of uh, purples in the shadow side. So I'm gonna put those in and I'm gonna leave some of the red showing through because I think that looks neat. And then I've got like warm, warm light on the other side, kind of a yellow. It's a pale yellow, very bright. There's some greens and purples down at the water line. I, I used a couple of different greens here and I used a little bit of green in the shadow up here. Sometimes you're almost better off using the same green in different places in the painting rather than going and finding the exact right color. Because again, that, that uh, having a unified color scheme is really important. It, it's interesting to look at when you see the same, same color popping up in all different places in different contexts. It's like a, it's like a little found treasure when you're, when you're looking at it. And I think you, when, when the viewer is looking at it, it's almost subconscious that they start seeing these little bits of color all around that, that just keep popping up in different places. And I've got the rope. Now the rope isn't this dark. I'm kind of sketching that in and then I'm going to put some light colors on it decided I wanted a little bit of turquoise in the, in the boat in addition to the purple. I think now I'm going to work my way down uh, to the water and the reflections here. So I think I want to get the water in first for the most part. And then, you know, work the reflections into that. And I, I'm probably going to be pushing back and forth with the reflections and the, um, and the water. It's a kind of balance between throwing a couple interesting colors in there and then also not putting too many colors in. The shadows in the water and the ripples in the water down below have a little bit of green in them, so I'm using a kind of dull blue that's got some green in it. I'm kind of working all around here. Um, that's kind of like the way I like to work. I'm not necessarily going to 
go straight from top to bottom, although I, I usually like to work from back to front. I think that's kind of all I'm going to do for the water for the most part, at least for now. So now I'm going to start on the, the reflections here. I think this is going to be a couple of different colors. It's a little bit too warm. There's little bits of this reflection going all the way down here. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Usually the colors, the reflection in, in the water is usually a little bit darker. It's a little darker shade of the, of the same thing. And there's little bits of this boat Reflection going all the way down here. And I want to get some of the other warmer color in there as well. And there's a reflection of the dark side of the buoy as well. Not as prevalent, but it's definitely there. Okay, and next I've got the mast coming all the way through, and I really want to really want to highlight that mast. I'm, I'm putting one color in here for now, but I'm going to be adding uh, other colors into it later as I go back to it. So there's a, the dark side is, is kind of following along here. And there's little bits of this that get reflected out, even out over to the sides. There's little bits of it that end up out here. It's just, it's funny the way, um, the way the light gets scattered. These reflections just kind of just get scattered all around and it's really fun to get those. The lines on the, the boat that go up are pretty important. I want to get those. And they're, they're really easy, with, especially these new pastels. You just lay the edge down and, and scooch it a little bit and you get a nice straight line. It's, they're awesome. Okay. I think the lines were important. Dave Caphammer has shown us how to create an interesting water landscape in pastel. He started with a strong composition based on his own photograph sketched out in charcoal. He then laid in a pastel underpainting using colors that support or complement the local colors to create a foundation for the painting. He built the painting in layers of pastel, paying special attention to warm light, cool shadows, and interesting reflections. For further information on Dave's work and upcoming shows and classes, be sure to check out his website at davecaphammerart.com. Visit melroseArts.com for information about Melrose Arts, upcoming events, and future art in action demonstrations dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose.